everybody, welcome back to the Resurrection Auto Rebuilders channel, where the end of the road is just the beginning. Yeah, that's a slogan I came up with not too long ago, and um, I think we're going to go with it. Um, so anyhow, I, I need to apologize. It's been about six months since I've uh, uploaded a video, and um, a lot has happened in that period of time. Um, it's not that I haven't tried. I've probably got about a half a dozen videos started and just never completed. Um, it's just, it's very difficult. Uh, I give uh, the, the professional YouTubers, the guys that are really making a go at this, I give them a lot of credit, like Goon Squad, um, you know, Cletus McFarland, and all these guys, uh, Brian from Paint Society. So anyhow, um, a lot, like I said, a lot has happened in the last six months. Um, I think where we left off is I had that 2013 uh, blue uh, Malibu that I ended up repainting the whole vehicle because I couldn't get the paint to match. And uh, sure enough, um, uh, a guy at a paint shop just recently told me that they did change the formulation between the years 2013 and 2014 for the Atlantis Blue Metallic. And so there was probably, other than having it scanned and mixed special, there was probably no way to actually just get the proper paint for that car. I sold that car uh, for $6,700, um, made a couple thousand dollars on the deal even after having to paint all of it. So that was a pretty good deal. Um, we, after that we picked up uh, a 2014 um, Malibu that was in a front end collision and I think that one I bit off a little bit more than I can chew. Um, it was missing a lot of the front end and a lot of that front end is very expensive. Um, we've got all the pieces to it. I have a feeling that once I put that car back together, I'm going to be lucky if I break even on it. And that's okay. Every, you know, not everyone's a winner. Um, in the meantime, though, what happened is, is, uh, I had been driving a 2002 Suburban, um, 320 some odd thousand miles on it, and it was getting the, to the end of its life. So I started looking for a vehicle to replace that and I came across a Facebook Marketplace ad for a 2011 Suburban that was at a dealership. It was a uh, trade-in and they were just wholesaling it out. You know, it is what it is. Um, warts and all, I think they washed it is about all they did to it. And I uh, went to look at it and found out that that had been promised to another customer. So I told them, I said, hey, you know, if it falls through, give me a call. A couple days later, they actually called and said, hey, the deal fell through. You want, are you still interested? I came out and looked at it. Um, they were asking uh, $9,900 for it. And I went and looked at it, and it was pretty rough, um, 172,000 miles. Um, it was kind of rusty underneath, um, but the brake lines and the gas lines had been replaced, and that was the big thing. And they had been replaced with the new ones that were coated. So... Um, I offered them 8000 and they took it, and uh, so now I own a 2011 Suburban. But the big thing with it is the front bumper needs replacing. It, it's how it came. It, it was all busted up. Somebody must have hit something, so um, I had uh, ordered a front bumper, and it's been waiting for uh, the right moment in time to, um, to get it painted and replaced. So anyhow, let's, uh, let's take a walk outside, and we'll take a look at the car. Ah, the beautiful outdoors in winter in Michigan. God, I hate this. Anyhow, as you can see, uh, we've got a little snow on the ground. So um, that kind of plays into this project as well. Because here's the Suburban. And here's the front bumper. And this is basically uh, how I got the car. Um, it was a little bit better than this. There's some chunkage that has uh, broken off since then. And you can see we need headlights. I have a new set of headlights for it. Um, I didn't realize I needed this center section here, but this center section is all broken. Uh, all the tabs are broken off and it's just barely hanging on. And that thing is like $218 for that little silver piece. God. So anyhow, this is the, this is the unit. It's, uh, it's, it's a baller. It, it does work. Um, we've hauled a lot of cars with it. We've been to Pennsylvania. We've been to Iowa. To pick up cars and um it's done a great job it just it looks kind of ugly and uh even though we you know we have some body work that needs to be done uh, that's going to come uh, a little bit later in the year um but right now what we're going to do is we're going to do this bumper because 
I have to uh, install a plow mount. Um, and for that, the bumper has to come off. Um, you can see the snow plow is sitting over there and the snow is still on the driveway. So without the plow mount, I can't really do anything. Well, this is the wife's uh, 16 Malibu. We got this. It was a flood vehicle. And uh, what made me actually bid on it was right down here on the inside of the rocker panel. I can't show you because it's locked. I don't have the key on me. But they marked the water line. And the water line was really low. So when I got it home, um, there was some mold. There was some, there was, some, you, the, there was still wet. Um, this was in August. And it had been at Copart since, no, this was September, and it had been at Copart since July. And um, I'm just getting all these stories out here. Um, anyhow, we got the car home. Um, the battery was, of course, smoked, so we put a new battery in it and fired right up and um, drove just fine. Everything was great. The only thing that, that was not working was the seats uh, would not move forward or back. They would move up and down. They would tilt back and forth, but they would not move forward and back. So we got it in the shop. We started taking the interior out of it, and I started uh, cleaning the seat tracks because there was a lot of dog hair. I don't know what it is with people with dogs. So there was dog hair on the seat tracks. So I lubricated that. I cleaned it all, lubricated it all up, and guess what? The seats started moving back and forth. So anyhow, we got the entire interior out of it and dried it. Took about three days for it to drip dry. We cleaned out everything in the floorboards, found out that the water had not gotten to any module, not one module. All the modules in that car sit on top of the tunnel that the center console sits on, and the water didn't get that high. So there, there was basically wet carpet. They totaled this car for wet carpeting. And that was great, because <laughs> like I said, I just spent, like this car like was $6,000. Like that's including fees. So we walked out of there with a winner and um, that was all well and great until Halloween when the wife hit a deer and did $7,700 damage to the right front end of this car. So that one got fixed by the body shop. They had it for a month and now she's back and the wife's driving her. Back inside and we're gonna take a look at my homemade body or not my homemade body shop, my homemade paint booth. And uh, we're going to see, uh, show you guys how you can uh, do this yourself in your own garage and uh, help mitigate your dust and uh, dirt and um, get a little bit better paint jobs. So let's get back right, inside. It's we've, nice uh, and warm. My hands up, are freezing. Uh, a little bit from our little adventure outside. Uh, we're going to get down to what this video is all about. Making a homemade spray booth inside your garage. Um, I think that's probably for, for all you home paint sprayers, that's probably the, the biggest challenge after, you know, getting your gun set up and your air set up is how to minimize dust and dirt in your paint job and how to minimize the overspray onto everything else that's in your garage. So, um... If, if you've looked at some of my videos in the past, you'll, you'll notice I had a, a kind of a spray booth in here before I had made like almost like a plastic enclosed cube hanging from some PVC pipes hanging from the ceiling. Um, and it, it basically, it, it had PV, or plastic walls, plastic on the floor and a plastic ceiling to keep things from falling. And what I found is that one is that it, it didn't really help all that much. Uh, and two is that I couldn't open my garage door uh, at all because the, the plastic blocked the tracks of the door so I couldn't get any uh, ventilation in here. So that being said, this time we did something a little bit different and I'm going to take you off the tripod. So ooh, extreme close up. And we're going to kind of look at what I did here. It's still hanging plastic, but this time I went all the way to the ceiling. And more importantly, I went all on the outside of the door tracks. So I can still open that big garage door. It's a 16-footer. It's insulated. Um, 
but I can open it up. And, and that's, that's huge. That way I can leave this plastic up and we're good to go for, for painting. You know, here we have the bumper hanging from a couple wires in the ceiling. And this is how I'm gonna paint it. Um, everything else is, is covered in plastic. And it going all the way to the ceiling does two things. And one is it, it prevents the dust from out there from getting in here. And two, it mainly prevents the overspray from in here getting out there and covering everything, including my toolbox and, and all the stuff on the shelf. Now, here's the problem that a lot of people face, and myself included, is ventilation. I've got one small window right there. I've got a service door there I can use, and I've got the big garage door. My heat source is this basically open flame natural gas furnace or you know heater on the wall. Um, does a great job. It is 72 in here. Um, and the bad part is, is it's open flame, so I cannot have it on or even the pilot light on while I'm spraying in here because, you know, we risk of explosion. So here's where it all kind of comes together is that I have to shut the gas off to the heater when I start spraying. So what I try and do is I get it as warm as I can in here. Now you say, okay, well, what's the problem? The problem is the ventilation. So if I open up a window and I open up the door and I get air moving this way, it's gonna blow or it's gonna suck in cold air and blow all my heat out the door. Um, not ideal at all. And and secondly, then is is now then I'd have to have like ducting from the window through my booth and then out either the big door or the little door. Here's um, the, the last part of the equation is your air. Um, when I was painting before in, in the previous videos, if you go back and look through my previous videos, I was doing that off of a 30 gallon Craftsman air compressor that was probably 25 years old. It was my dad's, got it from uh, his shop when he passed away and it worked. Um, it was kind of limiting though. And what I ended up doing is I ended up having to buy a gun from Eastwood that was designed to run off of small compressors, the 30 gal like the 30 gallon compressors that put out about six or seven uh, cubic feet a minute. This gun is designed to run on about 5.4, something like that, 5.3 cubic feet a minute. So you could run it on a small compressor. The compressor would definitely cycle. So you had to watch your pressures. It was not ideal, but it was better than trying to run a full-size gun. Um, it was really challenging doing the whole car. I really had to be really careful with it. And there was a couple spots on the car where I was like, oh, no. Um, ended up being all right in the end. We finished it, um, and it looked pretty good. But um, shortly after that, that compressor just died. It, it just died. <laughs> it died. It started running one day and it wouldn't stop. It wouldn't build pressure. And the pistons in the, in the compressor portion of it just stopped working. It uh, might have been all the paint fumes. I don't know. Um, but anyhow, so we went out and we got a bigger compressor. And I did a lot of um, comparison shopping. And believe it or not, this one actually came from Lowe's where I work. Um, so I got the company discount on it. And... Um, since it was the holidays, we get double our discount. So I got double the discount on it and free delivery. Anyhow, it's a Campbell Hausfeld, uh, seven and a half horse, 80 gallon, um, 220 single phase. Uh, it puts out about 22 cubic feet a minute. It's got a magnetic starter. We got a regulator for it that has oil filter, oil separator, a desiccant filter and a micron filter or those may be flopped back and forth um, and then um, because during the summer with the humidity in the garage you get all kinds of water and the desiccant just can't keep up I got one of these which is a, a um, refrigerant dryer basically it's like an air conditioner and it 
the air passes over the air conditioner coils and of course it condenses the water out of it and the water drains out and your lines are clean. Now, if you notice this hobjobble of stuff here, I started with a giant basket of fittings from Lowe's and uh, thought I had it all figured out because you are basically supposed to have shutoffs, both input and output, and then a, a shutoff on a, on a kind of a cross leg here, basically so that when you're not using the dryer, you can isolate it out of the system and then it's just, just shop air, you know, just the regular air from the compressor. Well, I missed a few um, fittings and I'm not driving all the way back into work to get a few fittings. So we kind of cobbled together something that's gonna work and then we'll do our, um, do our proper setup here uh, this coming week. But this'll work. Um, it looks ugly, but it'll work. And um, we're gonna deliver some, some clean, dry air. Um, also, you know, there's gonna be a filter at, at the gun. You know, you have the little disposable filters uh, you can get. So your goal is to clean and dry and at the proper pressure with enough volume of air that you can maintain that pressure throughout your paint cycle. You don't want, you know, the, the compressor to be, the tank to be so small that you start running out of air and then the compressor kicks on and it can't keep that air volume up and it never keeps the pressure up. So your pressures are off, therefore your atomization is off. If you're gonna invest, if you're gonna do a lot of painting in your, in your garage, or in, at home, invest in a really good air compressor that puts out some air and you're never gonna have to worry about it. I, you can put a WYSI wheel on this thing and run it for like 10 minutes straight and the compressor won't kick on. And it screams while it does it too. And I, I could never even like run it for a minute on my other compressor without the compressor kicking on. Okay, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I appreciate you stopping in. And uh, again, I apologize for the uh, break in the action. Um, we're going to try and put out some more content on a more consistent basis. This is going to be the end of this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll uh, see how the uh, bumper came out after the primer. And uh, then we'll put some sealer on it. And then the base coat and clear coat. So the next, uh, the next video is going to be the painting video where we'll get it all painted. Um, and then the video after that will be the installation, uh, the removal of the old bumper, the installation of the, um, the plow kit. Um, I don't know if anybody would be interested in that, but it's a, it's a little uh, plow kit or plow mount for a snow bear snow plow. Um, and then uh, the reinstallation of the uh, headlights, the new headlights and uh, the new bumper. So thanks for stopping in. Go once you go down there to that comment section and uh, leave me a comment, criticism, concern, question, whatever you want. Uh, hit the like button. Um, hit the subscribe button. Smash that notification bell. You know all that good stuff. And uh, we will certainly see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. And thanks for uh, stopping by the Resurrection Auto Rebuilders channel.